Hello boys and girls. Welcome back to How to Eat Fried Worms. Today is Friday, April 17th. Yesterday when we read, we learned that Alan and Joe had stopped by to talk to Billy's mom, Mrs. Forrester. I think deep down they were trying to tell on Billy in the hopes that Mrs. Forrester would get worried or upset with him and make him quit eating the worms. And then of course, he would lose the bet and Alan wouldn't have to give him any money. Well, it turns out Mrs. Forrester double checked with the pediatrician and I guess eating worms would be okay. So their plan didn't exactly work. Now we do know that Alan and Joe are going to go fishing for a night with um, Joe's dad. So what that means is Mrs. Forrester has to be in charge of giving Billy the next two worms. So, go back to the one picture. Our chapter that we finished with yesterday, you can see Mrs. Forrester is getting the bag of worms. All right, chapter 21, the 10th worm. What's for dinner? Said Billy's father, coming into the kitchen. Well, said Billy's mother, you and I and Emily are having hamburgers and string beans and mashed potatoes. Billy's having a fried worm. More worms? The bet's still on, Billy? Look, she took a small plate out of the refrigerator. It was covered with saran wrap. And you've eaten nine of these already, Billy? Dad kind of poked the worms curiously. What do you do? Use a lot of ketchup and mustard? Billy nodded. And horseradish and other things. And we fry them. Billy's father lifted a corner of the saran wrap and smelled the worms. Hmm, Helen, you ought to be able to do better than fried. Let's get out your cookbooks. Oh, no, I'm not the cook. I'm just the referee, Mrs. Forrester said. Oh, come on, think of the challenge it would be. He took a cookbook from the shelf under the spice rack. Let's see. Oh, let's look at this one. Mastering the Art of French Cooking. He leafed through the cookbook. Here. Okay, how about poached eels on toast? No, said Billy's mother. It calls for chopping up the eel in little pieces, and that would be against the rules. No chopping up the worm in tiny little pieces. Okay, well, how about spaghetti with worm balls then? Or, ooh, a savory worm pie. Creamed worms on toast? <gasps> Spanish worm. Worm loaf with mushroom sauce? Wait, said Billy's mother putting down her cooking spoon. It might just, she took the cookbook and turned to the index. Okay, here. She read, a lastion smothered worm. Dredge the worm with seasoned flowers, flour, excuse me, saute in three tablespoons drippings until browned. Cover with sliced onions. Pour over one cup thick sour cream. Cover pot closely and bake in a slow oven until tender. Bravo, said Billy's father. Put the hamburgers back in the refrigerator. We're all going to eat worm tonight. <sighs> I won't, said Emily. Ha, <laughs> said Billy, grinning in the midst of chewing. Boy, Alan and Joe thought they were doing me in when they came to you, Mom. But this is better than steak. It really tastes good. Aw, oh, yuck, murmured Emily, making a face. Let me have a taste, said Billy's father. No, no, said his mother. Billy has to eat every bit himself. Alan and Joe were very firm about that, and I'm the referee. Boy, said Billy, I don't mind if it tastes like this. Chapter 22, The Eleventh Worm. How'd you do it, said Billy? What's it called? Oh, my word, said his father. Gosh, Mrs. Forrester, gasped Tom. On a silver dish in front of Billy lay an ice cream cake bathed in all kinds of fruit syrups, peach, cherry, tutti frutti, candied orange, topped with whipped cream, sprinkled with jelly beans, and little slivers of almond. It's called a whiz-bang worm delight, said Billy's mother proudly. I made it up. Is the worm really in there, said Billy, poking about with his spoon, and then scraping away a bit of whipped cream on one end. He glimpsed the worm's snout protruding from the corner of the cake. Snug as a bug in a rug, 
said his mother. Oh, I still wouldn't eat a worm, said Emily, eyeing the whiz-bang worm delight with envious distaste. I would, said Tom. At least, maybe I would. Here's a picture of the boys looking at the whiz-bang delight. I don't know. Even with ice cream and fruit syrups and whipped cream, I don't think I could do it, boys and girls. How about you? Chapter 23. Oh, my gosh. This is a crazy title. Admirals Nagumo and Kusaka on the Bridge of the Aikaiga, December 6, 1941. It won't work. Look, said Joe, even if he remembers the worm while we're at Shea, he can't get one. Where's anyone going to find a worm watching the Mets at Shea Stadium? Don't worry, we'll, we'll say you've won. We'll find a worm after we get home, and we keep right on stuffing him. Peanuts, hot dogs, hamburgers, Cracker Jacks, ice cream, orange soda, gum, candy bars. You know how he loves to eat. You've never seen him refuse something to eat. By the time we start home, he'll be so bloated, drowsy, burping. Remember the last time when his father took us? He was asleep by the time we hit the highway. Your father will carry him in from the car. His mother and father will put him to bed. Next morning, he'll wake up. Too late. He didn't eat the worm. And we won. 15 worms in 15 days, except he missed a day. Oh my gosh, Al and Joe are still trying to figure out a way to get Billy to lose. I wonder who's going to win in the end. Alan nodded his thumbnail. Oh, uh, what about Tom? Well, we'll ask him along and then just not pick him up. Now, that is not nice. We can tell your father and Billy that Tom's mother called and he was sick or his grandmother died or anything just so we don't have to bring him with us. Alan sighed. Geez, it's probably, it'll probably cost me $8 just to buy all that food, Cracker Jacks, hamburgers. Yeah, but it's going to cost you $50 if he wins. Yeah, well, oh, geez, how'd I ever get myself into this? If my father finds out... <sighs> Alan slumped down on the porch steps, gazing down at his sneakers, still kind of chewing on his nail. Come on, said Joe, slapping him on the shoulder. Cheer up, you haven't lost yet. Let's go ask your father. Chapter 24, The Twelfth Worm You think Alan really meant it when he said he'd given up, asked Billy, turning down the flame under the frying pan. He was cooking a toasted cheese and worm sandwich. I don't know, said Tom, looking in the refrigerator. I suppose so. He asked us to the Mets game. Say, is that chocolate pudding? Yeah, but don't take any. It's for after supper. Well, I could scrape some off the top and then you could tell your mother it fell upside down on the floor by mistake while you were getting the cheese out and you scraped the dirty part off and threw it away. Uh, well, said Billy doubtfully. Thomas Grout, said Billy's mother. I'm surprised at you as she came walking down the hall. Oh, Mrs. Forrester, I wouldn't really have done it. I was just, you know, talking. Everybody talks. My father, Billy's father, Billy, my sister's Annie, Charlotte, Polly. He was kind of backing up towards the door. Sadie, Agnes, Columbus. I didn't know you had a sister named Columbus, Tom, said Billy's mother. Would you like some chocolate ice cream instead of the pudding? Oh, sure, Mrs. Forrester, said Tom, Whew, relieved. He sat down at the table. It's actually my cousin who's named Columbus. He grinned. Columbus, Ohio. He's a capital fellow, Mrs. Forrester. And then he had to grab the edge of the table to keep from rolling off his chair, laughing at his own joke. See, boys and girls, Columbus is the capital city of Ohio. So that's why he's saying that. He's a capital fellow. And then he had to grab, oh, I'm sorry, he had to grab the edge of the table because he was laughing so hard. Billy looked disgusted. His mother opened the refrigerator, shaking her head. Chapter 25, Pearl Harbor. The car slid quietly to a stop under the streetlight under Billy's house. Shh, whispered Alan to his father. Billy's asleep. His father glanced back at Billy, snoring peacefully in the back seat, 
His plump cheeks were still sticky from the orange soda. Alan run up to the house and tell them I'm bringing Billy in. Billy's father met them at the front door and taking Billy, whispered, thank you. Alan and his father went down the walk. Behind them, the porch light clicked off. In the back seat of the car, Joe and Alan wrestled gleefully. We did it! We did it! We've won! He'll never wake up now. Alan struggled out of Joe's grip and asked his father what time it was. Oh, it's late. Almost midnight, I think. Joe pulled Alan's head down and tried to sit on it. He couldn't do it now even if he woke up. How could he find and cook a worm in the dark? Hee <laughs> hee, we won, we won. Chapter 26, Guadalcanal. But slumped on the bathroom stool, his mother holding up his chin while she watched his face, Billy started to wake up. Hold still, dear. Did you have a good time at the game? You're certainly home late. Is this part of winning the bet? Oh, Billy's eyes blinked sleepily. He had a gnawing feeling that he had forgotten something. He hiccuped it, gazily, gazing dopily down at the fuzzy blue math mat, bath mat, yawned. Oh, he'd remembered in the morning. It couldn't be that. Im oh, bet, bet. Oh, he hadn't won yet. There were still three to go. Fifteen, fifteen worms in fifteen days. Today was, he jumped up. Mom, I haven't eaten my worm today. And suddenly it all came to him, the whole trip. All the candy bars, the hot dogs, the hamburgers, the popcorn. What time is it, Mom? Quick. It's about quarter to twelve. Or eleven forty-five. It was a trick. He snatched his pants off the floor. They were trying to make me forget. He tumbled and slid downstairs through the dining room. His shirt tail flying, yanked open the drawer in the kitchen table, snatched out the flashlight, the drawer spilling out with clatter and crash onto the floor, and went slamming out the back door. Those finks! He scuttled across the back field towards Tom's house, searching the ground with the flashlight as he went. There! Oh, darn a stick! Gee, suppose I can't find a worm tonight! He stopped. Oh, there's not going to be time to cook it! He ran on. Oh, no ketchup! I'll bet Tom wasn't sick at all. He ran on. The night was moonless and close. He paused to heave over a rotten leg in the high, dewy grass. Mealy bugs, scooters, clambered over the stone wall into Tom's backyard, and it was all of a sudden rustling with a pup tent. Muffled grunts and thrashings. Tom, he yelled. Tom, it's me, Billy. They're trying to trick us. Tom and his younger brother, Pete, crawled out of their tent. It was a trick, panted Billy. <sighs> Alan and Joe. They were trying to make me forget 15 worms in 15 days. If I don't eat one in the next 10 minutes, Alan will say he won. It's almost midnight. Oh, and they left me home so I couldn't remind you, said Tom. Yeah, Billy nodded. Have you got a worm? We're going to have to find one. Tom dug back into the tent and came up with two flashlights. They zigzagged back and forth across the line. lawn, bent over searching. I got one, cried Pete. Shh. Oh, I'll have to eat it raw, said Billy. And he threw back his head. Wait, whispered Tom, grabbing his arm. You should do where Alan and Joe can see you, Pete. Run and get your siren out of the garage. Here's a picture of the boys trying to find a worm. And boys and girls, that is the end of our story. But I will tell you that chapter 27 is called The 13th Worm. I will see everybody Monday, April 20th, for more of How to Eat Fried Worms. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you soon.